A couple of years ago, well, almost a couple of years ago, I reviewed the film The Hitman's Bodyguard in order to promote the release of this film I'm about to review. They didn't get a chance to see it until just late last year, before, well, before last year was over with. So now it's time to talk about Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. Is this recent sequel really that bad? Or am I going to have to give this film some good old-fashioned Big D justice? Well, find out in this review right now. Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Duol, better known to as the Big D, and this time around, I bring to you a review of the 2021 action comedy sequel, Hitman's Wife's Vigard, released by Lionsgate. And uh, for Millennium Media and other studios, there's so many of them. Which, of course, was originally to be given to us by Summit Entertainment, I'm sure. Anyway, narrated by Patrick Hughes, written by Tom O'Connor, and Brandon and Philip Murphy. Featuring, featuring Ryan Reynolds, Samuel L. Jackson, Salma Hayek, all from the previous film, plus Richard E. Oh, yeah, and Richard E. Grant, forgot him. With Frank Grillo, Antonio Banderas, and Morgan Freeman join the cast. This time around, the suspended bodyguard Michael Bryce is is about to tackle another job. He once again teams up with hitman Darius Kincaid and his wife to stop a madman from launching a terror attack on Europe. Now, if you have not seen my review of the Hitman Spy Guard, I advise you to click on that card there and check out that review before you go into this one. Sorry, just give me a moment of silence. Alright, let's get into the story. Which, yes, I'm giving all of it because since it's been almost two years since this came out, Michael Bryce temporarily retired from being a bodyguard while he awaits reinstatement of his license, tries to clear his mind in on vacation in Capri until Sonia Kincaid tracks him down and asks him for his services. She needs his help and recovering her hitman husband, Darius, after mobsters kidnap him. After saving Darius, Bryce and Kincaid are caught by Interpol agent Bobby O'Neill, who needs their help in locating terrorist mastermind Aristotle Papadopoulos. He wants to destroy the European power grid and infrastructure as the European Union is planning to impose more sanctions on Greece. The trio gets into more trouble, as you can imagine, with Bryce taking much of the physical brunt of their encounters. After getting help from his bodyguard stepfather, Bryce Sr., the trio is captured by Aristotle's henchmen. He has a history with Sonya, and Aristotle was conned by her, even though he generally fell in love with her. Aristotle turns Sonya against Darius, so he and Bryce are forced to flee. Senior is revealed to be working with Aristotle and betrays Bryce. So Bryce and Kincaid compose themselves and work together to rescue Sonya and thwart Aristotle. Alright. Since this is just going to be the short version of the story, I'm going to go to the final act and the ending already. Alright, you have five seconds to stop this video, go to the description box below, fast forward to the time below. If you've seen the movie already, please continue. Here we go. Okay, you've been warned. After killing Aristotle's henchmen, Darius and Bryce disrupt his plan to drill into and damage the European power grid and communications and fight Aristotle and Senior. Bryce kills Senior before... Well, I mean, not before. After telling him about his eternal loyalty and friendship with Kincaid, while Kincaid and Sonya kill Aristotle, Bryce manages to hit the manual override to destroy the ship and stop the drill, and they 
and the three survived the explosion. O'Neill says they have to stay on the boat for 48 hours together before being cleared and free. Then hands Bryce papers to sign, which he thinks is his bodyguard license. Bryce signs them only to find out they are adoption papers for him be to become the son of, of Sonya and Kincaid, much to the horror of both Bryce and Kincaid. Bryce despondently jumps off the yacht. He is piloting while Sonya and Darius have a little SEX inside. In the story. Rarely I would try this not to, but well, this film did okay, but not as good as its predecessor, though, considering the pandemic was still going. But since um it kind of toned down a little bit. But anyway, why did I think of Hitman's wife's bodyguard? Well, I'm gonna say it had a lot of craziness and why have you more craziness as its predecessor as its predecessor had. Anyway, the film unfortunately got dissed big time. Actually, way big time. On the tomato meter, it's 26, a mere 26 percent, and that's way less than the than the 43 percent of its predecessor. True. Like its predecessor is cliched, but I don't care about it being cliched. Okay, now this now what the well the folks at Ron Tomato says they say despite the charms of its ensemble, this film fails to protect the audience from repetitive entire genre tropes. Well, that's true in ways, but even so, it has its moments. The rap says the film is a comedy with not one legitimate laugh and an action movie where cars keep blowing up while the A-listers yell at each other as though they were inherently amusing or entertaining. True. I got a few I got a few good laughs and good action bits and what have you from the well, the action sequence and what have you. Ryan Reynolds still pretty funny as Michael Bryce. And Samuel Jackson, man, he's even more well, you know as Darius. Salma Hayek as Sonya Boy, man, she was bad ass. Frank Grillo once again playing Bobby O'Neill, pretty good. Antonio Banderas playing Aerosol Papadopoulos. Well, uh, it's not bad of a villain. Morgan Freeman playing Michael Bryce Sr. That kind of was my big um, surprise and kind of a bit of a nitpick I had. Uh, him, Michael Stepfar and what have you. Uh, let's see. Richard E. Grant playing Mr. Seifert, an old associate of Bryce, the drug addict. Uh, it wasn't too bad. So anyway, yeah, the cast was... By and what have you. The characters were kind of a little mixed, but overall, I still had a little bit of fun watching it. The film made $7 million worldwide on its $7 million budget. Despite what Craig said, as the film was released in June of 2021, so it's been a year and a half since it came out, so as it was shown in a um, Australia, Asia, filmed 16 minutes longer than what we got in the U.S. cut. Never saw it, though. But if they think of releasing it in the U.S., I'd say you're more than welcome to. But I'd say it's very unlikely. But let's not jump to any conclusions or something like that yet. But anyway, now, after this, Patrick Hughes stated that a third film is in development with a basic plot, including an additional main cast member already mapped out. We don't know just yet. And by the following month, he acknowledged that the end of the film leaves opportunity open for additional installments. He stated that the ending of this film leads itself to more suffering for Michael Bryce so that you, so that he can continue for eternity because 
certainly loves watching Ryan suffer. There's potential to do it further, and we're certainly going to pursue that. Well, I wish them the best of luck. Because that ending kind of was a little... I don't know. That was kind of a... The ending was kind of odd in that bit. Where, um... With the adoption papers and what have you. Oh, boy. That was kind of, again, odd. But overall, it was still action-packed, though. Then the score from Atle or I am sorry if I mispronounced this, of Arson wasn't bad. But anyway, yeah. So, overall, him and his wife's bodyguard, well, it's not quite close to his, his, its predecessor, but it tries to do its best. It's kind of mostly the same thing like what we got with the first film. So, again, I wish him the best of luck if they do a third one. So, overall, would I recommend him and his wife's bodyguard? Well, I'm going to say just be, to be on the safe side, give it a one-time watch. Um, un Or unless you were a big, if you really were support for the first film, then I'd say go for it. But I'm going to say just play it safe and give it a one-time watch. And if you're not too thrilled with it, then don't bother with it again. So anyway, what are your thoughts on him and his wife's bodyguard? Let me know in the comments section below. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe, and be a part of the Big D Nation. Join me next time when I bring to you my review of a film I was going to review last year for its anniversary, but didn't get the chance to. It'll be The Bodyguard with Kevin Costner and the late, great Whitney Houston. So thank you for watching, and if you like this, consider checking out these other films uh, that featured some, well, some of the stars of this movie, the big guys. In the upper left-hand corner is my review of a much more cooler film with Ryan Reynolds, that being Free Guy from 2020. Um, no, it wasn't 2020. It was the same year. My bad. My mistake. Or, you know, my, my old head's not that good. But um, we all like Free Guy a whole lot. In the upper right hand corner is my review of, well, film where Samuel L. Jackson was the bad guy, and that was the, that was Kingsman: The Secret Service. Or if you'd like another, well, bad flick but had some kick-ass action, go to the bottom left hand corner and see my review of Barb Wire from 1996. And the bottom right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.